Hello, and welcome to another video tutorial from the Eva B. Dykes Library at Oakwood University. Today we're going to be looking at the PARCA test, which is an easy way to evaluate sources. The PARCA test has five components, purpose, accuracy, relevance, currency, and authority. When we consider the purpose of a material, we ask ourselves these kinds of questions. Is this resource meant to inform, teach, sell to, entertain, or persuade me? Do the authors or sponsors make their intentions clear? Is the information presented here facts, opinion, or propaganda? Does the point of view appear objective and impartial? What biases could be present in this resource? To test how well you assess purpose, take a look at this headline. What is the purpose of this article? If you notice the yellow sponsor content tag, well done. The purpose of this article was to sell or persuade on an advertiser's behalf. The next thing we need to consider is the accuracy of the resource. Where did the information in the resource come from? Is it supported by evidence in the material? Has the information been reviewed or refereed? Can you personally verify any information in the resource? Did the author use an unbiased and unemotional tone? Did he or she make any spelling, grammatical, or typographical errors that could show a lack of thought? With those questions in mind, take a look at this tweet from Fox News and ask yourself, how accurate is this resource? A quick look at other news sources shows that the information in this tweet is not accurate. The news agency did eventually delete this tweet and update the article it linked to, so that news article may now be considered a more accurate resource than it once was. Next, we consider the relevance of the resource. Does it relate to your topic or answer your research question? Who is the intended audience of this material? Is it written at an appropriate level for your needs? Have you looked at a variety of sources before deciding to use this one, or have you just clicked on the first available link? Finally, would you be comfortable citing this source in a research paper? Pretend that you have been assigned to give a speech on the topic, how to set up a story time for children on the autism spectrum. Then look at the article on the bottom half of the slide. Would this resource be relevant to your needs? If you notice that your demographic, children, doesn't match up with the demographic in the article, higher education students, good eye. This article's purpose and accuracy are great, but it just isn't relevant to what we need. Next, we look at the currency of the resource. When was it published or posted? Has it ever been revised or updated? Does your topic require current information, like the sciences do, or will older sources work as well? Finally, are all the links in this article functional, showing that it has been well maintained? Measure this article against those criteria and ask yourself, is this resource current? Once we look at the publication date of this article, September 1999, and the time-sensitive nature of its subject matter, we can conclude that this resource is not current. We should not use it in our research paper. However, it's worth noting that this article is still accurate. Its conclusions have been verified by more recent studies. So we could use this recent article in our research paper. The two articles come to the same conclusion, but we need to rely on the more current article to help us make our argument. Finally, we look at the authority of the author, publisher, source, or sponsor. We look at their credentials or organizational affiliations and whether or not they're qualified to write on this topic. Is there any contact info, such as a publisher or email address? And finally, does the URL reveal anything about the author or source? Websites ending in .com, .org, or .net are generally considered to need more vetting whereas websites ending in .edu, .gov, and .mil are considered more trustworthy. With those criteria in mind, take a look at the bio of Vanny Hari. 
She runs a popular blog called The Food Babe, which dives into matters of food science and nutrition. Based on her bio, how authoritative do you think she is on these topics? From her bio, we learn that she did not go to nutrition school. From the disclaimers on her blog posts, we can see that she is not a doctor or a registered dietitian. This leads us to conclude that she is not authoritative on the matters of nutrition or food science. This doesn't necessarily reflect on the purpose, accuracy, relevance, or currency of her materials. It just means that we should not look to her as an authority in these matters. So the next time you're evaluating a resource to use in your paper or speech, remember the PARCA test. Purpose, accuracy, relevance, currency, and authority. If the resource meets all five standards, congratulations, you have a great resource that you can use with confidence. Thanks for listening. See you next time.